I'm going to start off uh, by telling you a little bit about my country, Ecuador, which is a biodiversity hotspot. It's one of the 17 mega diverse countries in the world. And we have four clearly defined regions, which you can see on screen, which um, mainly because of the Andes and the different elevations have make for a high variety of ecosystems. It's a hotspot for endemic vertebrates, particularly amphibians, reptiles, and plants. However, it's also the second country with the highest number of threatened species. Um, the main causes of this are land use changes for agriculture and urbanization, which have very much affected Ecuador, especially in the coast. Invasive species, which are threatening native species. Um, over-exploitation of our species, of our biodiversity, pollution, and climate change. But what does biodiversity have to do with ONT? Um, well, genomics is actually crucial for biodiversity conservation and is revolutionizing our understanding of the biodiversity and guiding us towards more effective conservation strategies. So how? Um, first, genomics, as opposed to more traditional genetics um, focuses, allow us to understand genetic diversity very well and know what populations are genetically fit, um, what populations have low gene genetic diversity, and um, be able to work out conservation strategies according to that. It also helps us identify evolutionary relationships and know what um, organisms are related and even species and um, groups of species. Genomics allows us to detect inbreeding and genetic bottlenecks very well, which can be a very big threat to the conservation of species. And all of these factors contribute to conservation strategies that take into account the genetic fitness of the species of the different populations, as opposed to only taking into account the habitat. Genomics also allows us to monitor populations and see how the genetic diversity has been, or, and other factors have been changing through time. And know what conservation strategies are working or not. So in spite of genomics being such an important tool for biodiversity conservation, there is a gap in developing countries. Um, species in developing countries are underrepresented in global genomic data sets. This is due to several reasons, mainly lack of funding, um, of infrastructure, and data accessibility issues. But since the majority of the world's biodiversity is in these developing countries, we, have, we feel it's important to have more presentation in these um, genomic data sets, and ONT agrees. <laughs> so our goal at the um, Plant Biotechnology Laboratory at USFQ is to obtain high-quality reference genomes of emblematic and endangered species in our very biodiverse country, Ecuador. So first I want to talk about an emblematic species that we worked on and we are still working on, which is the Andean blueberry or mortinho as it's called in Spanish. Um, it's the only vaccinium species in Ecuador. It's native to the Andean highlands and it's valued in Ecuador for its nutritional and flavorful berries, which are used in our uh, foods like colada morada and our pies. Um, this is a plant that is also very rich in nutraceuticals with health benefits such as antioxidants. And uh, it's very resilient to the highlands, the paramos ecosystems like frost, freezing temperatures, and high UV radiation. Um, our first goal was to obtain a high quality reference genome for the species. And we were able to do so. As you can see in this snail plot, we obtained a high quality um, assembly with a record length of 529 megabases, which is what we expected uh, for a vaccinium species. We also obtained good BUSCO scores, so we searched for conserved regions that should be in our assembly and that indicate genome completeness, and we found 96.9% of those regions. Um, our LAI score was also high, so this is, a complete, uh, is, is also a reference genome assembly. Um, it's a statistic that allows us to classify it as a reference genome. Our study is published in this journal, G3, and all the assembly statistics, all the information relative to this assembly can be found there, as well as on the public database and CBI. And we're not stopping there, so this is an ongoing project. We're now working on a genomic study of genetic diversity and adaptations of Mortinho to extreme ecosystems. Um, and we're using our reference genome to map the individual genomes of uh, plants 
collected in different areas of Ecuador at different elevations and um, trying to see what variations we can find. The fieldwork is done and we are currently sequencing the genomes. As for endangered species, um, we are part of the Org1 initiative that seeks to um, support the sequencing of any endangered species anywhere by anyone. Um, as I mentioned before, Ecuador has a high number of threatened species, but few reference genomes. And what we aim to obtain is the reference genomes of these endangered species to understand, to later be able to understand the genetic fitness and be able to provide tools that will support conservation strategies. So we've been mainly focused on primates. The first species that we sequenced was the Ecuadorian brown-headed spider monkey, which is in the north uh, west of Ecuador and is critically endangered. We're also currently working with the Ecuadorian white fronted capuchin, which is also in the Ecuadorian coast, and the white bellied spider monkey, which is in the Amazon. As you can see, it's not only in Ecuador, it's in all of the Amazonian countries in South America. So, as for results, um, regarding the Ecuadorian brown headed spider monkey, we have now the first genome sequence and assembly of a primate carried out 100% in Ecuador using only six flow cells and a Mark 1C. These are the assembly statistics. So we have a length of 2.6 gigabases, which is what we expected for this primate based on similar species. Um, and we, I also want to point out the longest record or the longest contact, which is 44.6 megabases, which is almost the size of a chromosome. Our BUSCO scores are relatively good. The primate database has 13,000 and a little bit more genes, almost 14,000 genes, and we were able to find 81% of them. This, is also, this genome has also been published and is um, publicly available at NCBI. As for the other two primates, um, we still have preliminary results, but our final assembly for the Ecuadorian capuchin has better statistics than our first assembly, so um, we have less contigs. The first assembly had, had 3,000 and a little bit more contigs. We are we're now reducing that number. Um, with the white-bellied white spider monkey, we have 2,000 uh, and a little bit more. Our largest contig is improving. And as you can see, our complete boost goes are greatly improving, showing that we have more complete genomes. So right now we are also carrying out the sequencing of other genomes of different groups of species. We were using a Mark 1C for the first two species that I mentioned, but we had a P2 solo on loan for, from Oruguan that we used for the third primate species. And um, now we acquired one, so we're using it to sequence these genomes. Um, we're working with a plant species called Scalesia gordiloi, which is endemic to San Cristobal Island in the Galapagos, and it's critically endangered. We're also working with this lizard that you see on screen, Peter Zameva. It's endangered, critically endangered, and it's endemic to a small geographic region in the south of Ecuador called Asuay. Um, and finally, we're working with Centrolene buclei, buclei's glass frog. It's a frog that is found in the Ecuadorian highlands and is critically endangered as well. Um, so far, we are um, very advanced in, this, in the DNA extraction process, and we're currently sequencing and trying to get the longest read pos reads possible in order to assemble these genomes that don't necessarily have a closely related species that, we, that can guide us for assembly. Um, so these genomes, we believe, will be valuable tools to help understand the genetic diversity, population structure, evolution, and adaptations of endangered species in megadiverse countries such as ours in Ecuador. And uh, finally, I want to acknowledge the team at the Plant Biotechnology Laboratory at USFQ, my PI, Maria de Lourdes Torres, the researchers that worked on this project, myself, Martina, and Mil Milton, and the students that were part of the projects. I would also like to thank all our partners in funding. So Fundacion Washu, Inavio, and Tueri um, have been essential to get the samples. And um, Orguan and Fondos Cosiba USFQ have provided the funding for these very important projects. Thank you very much.